Welcome to my short story. Written and read by Sonia Alper. With music by Gregory Alper from his CD, My Time. For more information, please visit my website, sonjas-shortstory.com. And now... A life in dreams. The bedroom is still dark. My dreams hang in the cold air like fog above the river bank before the sun burns it off. Even though invisible, I know the decorative plaster molding where wall and ceiling meet down to the last leaf. Behind my closed eyes, I imagine the ghostly sheets of fantasy evaporating into the stucco. These are my favorite moments of the day. I envision my life unfolding like a movie and let my thoughts run wild in ever-changing scenarios without restrictions. In my dream world, I'm a Russian ballerina, captivating my audience with graceful pirouettes and melancholy eyes. I drink champagne in the dressing room, and admire the most exquisite jewelry given to me by a count, a baron, a prince. I'm a girl from Sweden with silky blonde hair and all the boyfriends I want, especially from faraway Italy, who caress me with soft-sounding words like chocolate truffles melting on my tongue. I'm a muse in long flowing dresses and a flaming red pixie cut, to a crazy painter in Paris at the turn of the century, whom I will make famous one day. I travel as a captain of a big boat to foreign lands, explore distant cultures with languages I don't understand, taste alien-looking sweet and juicy fruit that grow along the seashores, where I just have to pick and enjoy them. And when I come home, always in summer only, I sleep under three blankets because I'm not used to the cool climate. Images like these entertain my mind. Anything goes. I reinvent myself a million times, a habit born out of necessity, since my reality is nothing in comparison. I'm dreaming my life, and whoever might have the power to help me change it, please, let it come true. I'm going to work real hard to change my life, because I don't want to get married and be left alone. I don't want to gain weight like the women on my street, get a perm to curl my straight hair or wear a pearl necklace as a sign of wedded bliss. I will be beautiful and generous, and understanding especially with all who are less fortunate. And I will enjoy my life to the fullest. When I was a little girl, the stucco with its vines and leaves would sometimes melt into malicious masks. They had the power to tickle my insides without touching me. And the longer I stared at them, the bigger they'd grow, until they'd finally envelop me in a cold embrace. That must be what death is like, I thought. Only here, I'd wake up again. Consisting of distorted faces, these menacing creatures seemed to swim amoeba-like, shifting with every blink of my eyes. With index finger and thumb, I forced my eyelids open for as long as possible to keep them from moving, but it was a lost cause. Then I discovered that if I concentrated on something pleasant, they'd either vanish or I would find the strength to leave them behind by running out the room. One image that always worked either way was clear blue skies with white seagulls. It wasn't easy to dream up, but when it finally came into focus, I was free. 
Exhausted but no longer terrified, I could then fall asleep again. Or I would escape to the kitchen and look out the window into the backyards down below. The big old trees were always there. Reliable, like a golden retriever or German shepherd. This view brought me back to life, made my heartbeat slow down and calmed me. Only when I was too scared to move and my eyes wouldn't stop blinking because I was afraid that the faces with their wide open mouths would swallow or suffocate me, only then had I no choice but to wait it out. Mesmerized and appalled at the same time at seeing what was happening, I asked myself if it was happening. Did it happen in reality or in my mind only? These illusions, during waking hours I saw them as such, were very stubborn. I couldn't manipulate them. They seemed to exist in some other dimension, out of my reach of fantasy, and yet they found their way into my innermost self. Funny thing was that they sometimes smiled, but even though that would put me at ease for a moment or two, and I did want to believe them, I never trusted them. They are there now, haunting me, exposing my secret thoughts, humiliation and emptiness fill my stomach, extending to my spine, crawling up and icing me until I'm unable to move. Only I have to face them. It is time to get ready for school. Eventually, like diving from a cliff into unknown waters, I manage to liberate myself and leave the horror behind. Thank goodness I had laid out my clothes in the kitchen the night before. A precaution I find helpful, because I never know how the next morning will turn out. I could not bear the thought of entering the bedroom again. I'd rather go naked 